did it. Um, hey, Kevin, how is it going? How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. Yeah, we had a spate of good weather in London, so um, that's that always lifts the spirits in the UK. Um, I think we have uh, 30 minutes to chat about Rally, um, so I'll just get started with some quick introductions, and then we can dive right in. Um, a, a quick introduction uh, about me. My name is Junian Wong. I work with Rally as a researcher in residence. And the thing that I'm trying to uh, investigate is this notion of, you know, what can we learn from the existing economics, uh, anthropology, uh, and other literature about tokenizing communities? Uh, and specifically, how can we apply some of those lessons to the notion of a tokenized community meetup? Um, just because those you know, community meetups tend to be the sort of a, the foundation of uh, being able to capture a crew and then and then build value uh, within a community. So that's that's a project that I'm doing um, with Rally. Uh, you may have seen my journalistic and other work uh, at CoinDesk, uh, Quartz, uh, and I started the uh, consensus conference uh, at CoinDesk uh, back in 2015. Um, that's me. Kevin, uh, obviously, is the uh, co-founder and CEO at Rally, and before that uh, had a long career uh, building up Kabam games um, and uh, it additionally started uh, Gen G, which is an esports organization. Um, I don't know if Kevin, if you want to add uh, anything to that, to that quick bio at all. I, th I think that's a great introduction. I've, um, I think the only thing I would add is that I've been uh, thinking about and, and playing with crypto technology for four plus years at this point and then um, you know, finally decided about two years ago to dive in with Rally to build um, a project to tokenize people and communities online and explore what we're now calling the, the social token movement. And uh, so I thinking about that a couple of years ago and um, couldn't be more excited to see how the space has progressed um, until today. That's awesome. I mean, maybe that's actually a good good place to start our conversation. You know, um, what was the thing that got you into crypto? I know you've told this story elsewhere before, but uh, maybe not to this exact audience. What was the thing that got you into crypto? And then, secondly, like, how did you sort of connect that to the idea of you know creators or um, just this idea of uh, user owned uh, communities? What got me into crypto was a game called CS:GO actually and so it's actually very popular in brazil uh some of the best csgo teams in the world have come out of uh brazil so very <laughs> apropos for for this uh blockchain conference and i had a friend who was in the gaming industry who created a csgo trading site using bitcoin uh, as a way to, to settle uh, the trades and uh, <clears throat> the site also included you know betting and wagering and in, in skins and then eventually in, in Bitcoin itself. And uh, so that was kind of my very first exploration into understanding what, what was Bitcoin and how were people using it in these communities. Um, and, and of course, I've been building games for you know, 11 plus years. And um, we were very lucky to, to have served uh, over 500 million users. And in, in the games that we built, we, um, we didn't allow trading. We had always thought about it, but we never allowed it. But people, gamers are, are incredibly passionate and incredibly tech savvy and they figure this stuff out. So they just started trading accounts. Now, trading accounts in games is, is a very old thing. Uh, but <clears throat> the community would figure out how to just trade, you know, buy and sell entire accounts. And then people who were really talented and had a lot of time on their hands, they could just go create a new account, farm it up, level it up, and then sell their account. And so I was kind of thinking about that, you know, quite a bit, thinking about Bitcoin. Uh, but didn't really see kind of the connection between, you know, between that. And it wasn't until a few more years later where there was a, um, a whole host of games that were kind of these celebrity driven games. And these celebrity games um, uh, were, you know, they were built around kind of the brand of an individual. So Kim Kardashian or Gordon Ramsay or a bunch of different athletes, you know, had their own, um, <clears throat> you know, games um, this goes all the way back to like madden football for example so you know games and brands and personalities have always uh, and games have always kind of intersected and this one game in particular called uh, kim kardashian hollywood uh you would go into the, you would 
you know, download the game or start playing the idea, of course, use uh, real money to buy cash, what was called cash, which is the virtual currency inside of the game. And then you would use the cash virtual currency to buy, you know, the, uh, the dress that Kim was going to wear, you know, on, you know, on TV, the next, you know, the next award ceremony or whatever she was attending. And so it was this very fluid game where Kim would talk about the things that she was doing, the party she was going to, the, the fashion that she was going to wear. And then you as a fan could kind of live it with her by buying it and, and sort of doing it. And they even had this in-game Twitter where you could you could tweet out that you were going to whatever you know party, and you thought you were just doing it in the game, but of course they're integrated with real Twitter, so you would you would tweet out onto real Twitter that you were playing Kim Kardashian Hollywood, and that you could, you could join up together and do some stuff in the game. And it just this game just absolutely blew up and um, had something like a hundred million downloads in the first you know three or four months, and. Um, and made in the course of its lifetime over three hundred million dollars, <throat> and uh, not too many people outside the U.S. know about this game because it's. I think she's a very U.S. centric celebrity, um, but I, I was thinking very, you know, a lot about that. And so when I got a chance, I was like, you know what? I want to take all of the incredibly powerful tools that we're making in gaming in terms of how do we create virtual currencies, how do we create virtual items, um, or what we call NFTs, you know, in, in blockchain. And how do we put that together and do it in what, what we what I think of as a no-code way? So the other thing that's happening in the gaming industry, if you're familiar with Roblox or Minecraft or some of these other uh, platforms, is the ability to create a game without having to do any any real coding. You know, you might need to do a little bit of scripting, but some very lightweight stuff. And then you got a game going, right? And so what I, what Rally is about is how do we work with people? How do we work with online communities and give them a token out of a box? Give them an incredibly powerful set of features um, uh, with a real blockchain token, as well as you know what uh, what we've been working on for a while is the ability to then turn those into digital assets and NFTs and be able to trade them and use them as a fan, um, almost without having to figure out all of the crazy blockchain stuff that uh, that we all we all do. But just make it super simple, make it no code to get set up and started. But then, if you want to make it as as you know, real and trustless and decentralized as 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 we can make it in terms of um, for the power users that want to kind of take you know take custody of all the assets themselves and so forth. So that was kind of the genesis of Rally, and uh, and um, you know making um, a social token easy for communities to use and adopt. And I think that's what we're so excited to unveil to the world uh, right now. Yeah, no, thanks for that. I mean, those are like two like really powerful ideas, right? The the um, and lessons I think from the gaming world, right? Um, this issue of like this idea of like um, a toolkit, like you know the, the numbers that Roblox is is pulling these days is, is just astounding, right? Um, and then the idea of like these virtual economies and people transacting with these sort of community currencies within within the game. So I mean, before we dive into all the rally details, I'm just wondering like given your long involvement in games and you know different facets of, of the game industry like what were the i guess what were the differences in trying to build you know gaming great ux very frictionless like users love it right that's why they're games um and then coming to blockchain uh and a lot of this very new technology can be quite clunky and difficult to use yeah, you know that that's that's been one of the most wild things about diving into crypto. And there are of course games that are very hardcore and are not very user friendly, but develop a very passionate community nonetheless. Um, and I feel like crypto is that. Crypto, you know, when I first started diving in and playing with some of the uh, the early Ethereum projects, um, uh, it just felt like it was all you know it was incredibly hard to use. But there's just sense that there's this incredibly passionate community that believed in the vision of decentralization, believed in the vision of kind of smart contracts and um, <clears throat> and trustless compute. Uh, so some of these like really exciting concepts, I think, attracted that community. It reminded me a lot of the, the initial you know, game community. But I think what what's really propelled the game industry growth to to new heights, you know, I mean, 2020 has just been wild for for games because of you know. Partly because of COVID, but really, I mean, we're just seeing games and smartphones and the, you know, the the continued um, 
adoption in an emerging country of, of you know very powerful smartphones now have just exploded with games. Uh, gaming is just growing at a, at a crazy rate. Something like 2.6 billion people today in the world play games at least once a month. <clears throat> and what made that possible was not those hardcore games that we first started talking about, but it was the games that you literally, you know, you see, you see a friend playing it, you see an ad, you see somebody on Facebook, you know, talking about it, you click, um, you download the game, you're in the game, and it's like 60 seconds or less. Right, you don't have to worry about all the crazy installation stuff. You don't have to worry about it's it compatible. Do you have the right drivers? Do you have the right GPU? Blah blah blah. It's like, you know, smartphone gaming just simplified the entire aspect of gaming down to a 60 second tap tap done, you know, sort of experience. And I think um, in the crypto, you know, world for Rally, we wanted to to do that. I just think that it's so incredibly powerful to get an experience down to 60 seconds and, and streamline as much as possible and try to abstract away, take all the hard things in the technology space and just try to you know, integrate as many things together to you know, make it super simple for the user. And then of course, it, and the really hard part is then to create a graduated way that users can take back control as they become um, you know, more and more sophisticated you know, in the space. So that's kind of the that's the the hybrid strategy that we built for Rally because we said for sure if we're going to get you know we're, we're really excited to be working with a um, uh, a soccer player in Brazil uh, he comes from Japan uh, he's played all over the world for AC Milan and for Russia and for Japan and so forth and Kaseke Honda so he's playing in Brazil and we said hey we want somebody like that to be able to create their own fan token their own fan you know fan community you know online with their own cryptocurrency token. And for their fans who've never experienced blockchain before to get into it in 60 seconds or less and be able to, uh, to earn or buy Kaseki Honda's token. And so um, so that was really the entire design principle was like, let's start with that, let's start with that design principle of making it super simple for somebody who's never experienced crypto before to get into it within 60 seconds. But yet let's make sure we understand exactly you know, how do we get that user from you know over the next several years, you know, to the point where they're comfortable using their own Web three wallets? They want to use their you know hardware wallet, you know, potentially um, to sign for all the transactions. They want to take full custody of their assets, and a user should be able to do that <clears throat> over time. And the network should be decentralized in a way that um, a creator or a fan doesn't have to trust you know rally the company, but they can trust the code. That runs the entire network. So that, those were the that was kind of the the beginning, you know, principle. It's relatively easy to articulate, but very very yeah. difficult to build. Yeah, out. I bet. I mean, we, let's dive into the details now about like you know how how Rally is set up and 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 how it works, right? But but I wonder like if you can use this as a guiding thing to to talk about the mechanics, which is like you know how do you think of creator coins, right? So like for example, you know, Kesuke Honda has a coin, right? Um, if fans buy the coin, how do they think about it? Are they sort of saying, well, I'm buying the coin because I think, you know, Honda's career is going to go great uh, and therefore the coin will appreciate? Like, what's a, what's a way for fans to think about uh, holding these coins? Yeah, so I go back to all the way to kind of what, like, what is Bitcoin? What is Ethereum? Ethereum is probably the easier one to, to get everyone to... Um, to, to think about because Bitcoin has many things that are unique to kind of Bitcoin, right? So, you know, if you're holding Ethereum, you could be, you know, holding it because you believe in vision, you believe in the long term, you know, of it, you believe in the economic design of its emission schedule um, or inflation schedule. You may be holding it because, you know, you're a user that does a lot of transactions and you just, you know, you just need, you know, you're going to need it for gas transactions. <clears throat> so you, you're just always holding on to, you know, um, you know, Two to five ETH or whatever it is. Uh, you may be somebody who's you know really active in DeFi these days, and so you're holding it because you're you're using it to um, collateralize uh, a loan that you may be taking out on on a, some DeFi application or, or or so forth, right? And so I think the the beauty or, or these days actually with ETH two staking, you know, finally locked, you may, you may be like taking your ETH and putting it into the the new staking mechanism for ETH two, right? So there's it's the same commodity, but it's being used for all these different things. And just like you know, gold, you know, could be used for making jewelry, or it could be used for you know, 
between two, you know, uh, between two independent states to transact, you know, in a common trusted, you know, medium. So, you know, we think about rally tokens and a creator, coin, like a Seki Honda's token, you know, kind of that way. And there's going to be some people, there's going to be fans that they hold it because they, they've they been a fan of his for 10 years. And, you know, they're, they're going to hold it because to them, it's part of their identity. To them, it's part of, <clears throat> I own this. I publicly want to show that I own a bunch of these tokens and I own, you know, other collectibles and other, other things, uh, because I'm, I'm a huge fan, you know, for others, they may, you know, care very much about, um, um, you know, let's say, <clears throat> you know, somebody who does uh, a lot of fantasy, you know, uh, games or fantasy, you know, football or soccer, you know, they want to, you know, they want to understand like what was going, you know, how is, uh, Kaseki Honda feeling, you know, today and, and, you know, one of the things that's kind of cool is that he's he's starting to use new tools to talk to his um you know his fans and uh and doing that on a more and more frequent basis as he gets more and more comfortable with it and so you know for example with our gen g team uh who's coming on and using a, a what's called a gen g strike coin so csgo it's a it's the csgo team for gen g and there's a lot of you know uh, betting markets on counter-strike and so uh, it's a way for people who are into that sort of thing to get an app to get access to the coaches and the players and the staff and like talk about hey what do you see is happening how do you feel about this upcoming game what's your strategy what do you see the other team doing and in, in the prior matches and what are, what are you guys going to be doing so there's going to be really interesting stuff that allows people who hold that token to get access to the people that they care about right and so some people are going to use it for that and then some people are going to use it because as you said they're just they believe that the brand of, you know, Kaseke Honda or Genji or, <clears throat> um, you know, uh, Portugal the Man or something is going to become a more and more valuable brand, and that crypto is going to encapsulate, you know, the value of that brand, um, and it brings all of those different market participants together into a single marketplace. And I think that's what's so powerful about what what crypto does is that. You know, you you could you could be somebody who needs it for you know using it for access. You could be somebody that needs it for, um, you know, uh, you know all, all sorts of different things, and you're all participating in this single marketplace uh, together. Just like two quick observations about what you said there. You, you know, I think um, you know when you look at the literature on you know subcultures, for example, right? Uh, one of the big overlaps there, and with anthropology, like people have found that, for example, lots of subcultures uh, tend to, over time, a, a, a kind of status hierarchy emerges, right? And then you have one of the things that keeps the subculture alive is the policing of the boundaries, right? You say, well, you know, wearing this jacket makes you part of this subculture and, and wearing that jacket doesn't. Um, and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, owning the coin is a kind of like way to quantify you know your 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 location in the in the hierarchy i guess um you could see it that way and then the other cool thing that you mentioned is like the ability for these coins to act as kind of hybrid tickets right so you know for example um there's lots of erc20 personal tokens out there that people uh you can have a certain balance of and if you have that balance that gets you into a uh a, a, a whole coin holders you know telegram group or, or discord right. or uh, newsletter so that like hybrid like ticketing thing is really interesting I think um, now maybe we can move backwards on, on how rally works because I think you've got or, or rally has got um, community uh, rewards coming up tomorrow so I don't know if you want to talk us through that a little bit and then we can kind of go backwards into like you know how it was launched how the rally token was launched and and the whole architecture of it with the sidechain Community activity rewards is super cool. It's it's something that, frankly, it's the whole it, it's it's the linchpin for the whole project. Um, and this is just the first phase of it. So, um, you know, I was reading that UTA, I think it was UTA, um, UMA. Sorry, uh, they rolled out something called developer mining rewards. And so, you know, it was a really cool thing for developers who are building new use cases for <clears throat> for UMA to earn rewards in the core network you know governance token and so rally uh it's a, it's a governance token but it's also the the token that helps to um 
uh, it's the governance token, but it's also the underlying liquidity for the entire network so that each individual creator or community doesn't need to go pursue its own you know, liquidity pools. And <clears throat> the coolest thing about Rally that we're, we're launching tomorrow is that if you're a creator or a community that's using um, one of these new creator tokens um, and uh, you're generating economic activity, your entire community will earn rewards in a way that aligns the creator and the fan sort of all together, right? And so the way that it works is that let's say, uh, let's say uh, we're we're using the the um, uh, you know a, a, a creator. Let's say your your paste notes uh, token, you know, for example, is starting to generate a number of economic um, transactions in it. Every week, and let's say at the end of the, the and let's say we generate a thousand thousand dollars of the transactions in this week. At the end of the week, we calculate all of the economic transactions in the network, and let's assume that that's fifty thousand dollars or, or something. Um, so the paste notes token would have generated two percent of the economic activity in the rally network, and would earn two percent of all the rewards for that week. And so the coolest thing is that a creator could potentially generate more than a hundred percent of their transaction. Um, in terms of their overall net take, right? Not only does Rally not take a transaction fee um, <clears throat> for a creator to use it, so if a creator wanted to say, hey, you know, to buy my merchandise or buy my other things, I, I, I'm i gonna take creator coins, um, my own creator coin as a form of payment, there's no transaction fees for that for the creator. Plus, those economic activity uh, could, could basically lead to the community activity rewards that give the creator, as well as anybody who's holding that creator's token, rewards um in that week and so the the coolest thing is that it's not a um the whole point is to move economics much more into not just a fixed pie you know how are we going to slice it like how are you going to pay me or how do i pay you uh you know in forms of money but rather yeah uh, we're all we all make up this community and the more economic activity we generate in our community the more rewards that we all we all earn together, and so it aligns the you know everyone who's who's holding that token and participating in that community. It aligns everyone together to generate rewards together, and so it's a pretty new system that um, I think is uh, um, it's never really been done before. Because even if you look at Bitcoin or Ethereum, it's it's done as an inflation schedule, but that inflation only goes to the miner that you know produce that block. You know, for example, and every other you know, miner is like, oh, I lost out on this <laughs> this round. And so great that that miner, you know, got it. In this particular case, you know, if, if I hold a bunch of your tokens, you hold your own tokens, and we've generated a ton of activity, you know, across our, our economy, you know, we both benefit, you know, in terms of the way that this reward is designed. So we call it community activity rewards. And it's the first time that a community together can earn rewards. Um, you know, together. So it's a it's a pretty cool thing. And it's pretty, we've got a bunch of uh, technical details and economic details um, on the Rally blog, as well as the Rally Discord. Um, <clears throat> and so if you're interested in that, check it out. But it, it's going to go live uh, in the next 24 hours. And so um, you'll start seeing a bunch of stats and KPIs and how it's calculated and how each creator community is earning, or how much acti economic activity they're producing and how much they're earning. So I think it's pretty cool. And it's the first time that a whole community um, will earn rewards together. Yeah, no, that sounds really interesting. It's a kind of like engagement farming or something like that, right? Like, so instead of- Community farming, yeah, community mining. You're, totally. Yeah, you're, you're, you're providing activity <clears throat> rather than um, 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 liquidity. Um, and I think I should also add, I think if viewers have questions, you should pop them in, I think, into, a, into the questions um, chat. So just- pop questions in if you have them. Um, I was going to then get into governance because Rally, you know, launched, what is it, about a month ago, right? And uh, you've all, we've all, Rally, the Rally community is already pretty active. There's a lot of chat in Discord. There's a bunch of, uh, uh, you know, proposals and people have voted on them. Um, even individual creators have been voted in, right? Um, and even the threshold for voting was changed because of a proposal. So um, I'm just curious um, how you think the whole governance piece has evolved. And then also personally, how do you keep on top of all of that? Because it's a lot of different channels. There's a lot of information to take in all the time, right? 
Well, I'll start with that one first, the, the, the last part first. Personally, I'm not on top of everything anymore. And that's kind of the beauty of it. So, you know, while before we launched Rally uh, on October 15th, my title was a CEO. Uh, but I don't call myself that anymore. Uh, I'm just the co-founder of the project, uh, you know, at this point. There is still technically a company we, we've kind of talked about in our community calls. Um, our plan is certainly by June of 2022, the company will dissolve. Uh, but we hope to do it actually even sooner than that. Um, so, yes, while I still technically am the CEO of that company, the company has given up all of its control over Rally. Right. So as you said, we can't even approve a, We can't even just unilaterally say, hey, you know, creator, come on, like we approve you. Come on board and we'll, we'll set you up with your own coin. Every single uh, creator coming onto the platform at this point needs to uh, the community needs to weigh in on whether that creator is acceptable you know, to the community. And this is super important. It may not seem important, you know, as of today and, you know, as, as, as we're so relatively early, but you can imagine for a platform like Twitter, like Facebook, for Twitch, um, how important it is for there not to be a, a company in control of that, um, of the decisions of who to ban, you know, from the platform, who to, you know, censor or to, to mute uh, on that platform. I think we're Increasingly in a world where, um, you know, even in the U.S., you know, which is where, you know, Twitter and, and, and Facebook and, and so forth are headquartered, we're not doing a great job with policing our own, you know, sort of uh, country, uh, much less, you know, I don't even know how Facebook deals with, you know, other, um, you know, governments all around the world and de democratic processes and so forth. And it's just, I think, you know, the, the whole point of Rally is to truly embrace the community run open network that is decentralized <clears throat> and for the community itself to be able to, to self-govern it. And so uh, I, I'm definitely not on top of, of everything that happens anymore. And I think that's a great thing, actually, that the community is vibrant enough that they're really taking on their own uh, governance. Um, and then to your previous question, I think, uh, you know, the, the governance of the, the network itself, uh, as you had suggested, um, you know, our, our goal is to, you know, make sure that, uh, you know, at this time, it's kind of an English speaking, you know, um, community that's come together. But we're thinking pretty deeply about how do we help, let's say, a Portuguese speaking uh, community come together and have its own governance structure uh, that is separate apart and doesn't need to, you know, mix into the overall uh, singular community. So um, so we anyway, we, we think about, you know, Rally is ultimately becoming a, a true network that's a, a, at a protocol level. Um, and then working with um, different communities all around the, powering kind of different communities all around the world without having to trust a single company that's based in Silicon Valley or based in, you know, London or based in, you know, um, um, Rio de Janeiro or something like that. You, you know, it's a, it's a truly decentralized community. Gotcha, gotcha. I mean, like just in terms of the volume of activity, were you, like tactically you know you, you the company had some surely had some ideas to like seed and kickstart that activity right so i guess were you uh did it were you surprised or sort of you know what was your i guess res impression in terms of um the tactics you used to kickstart that governance activity and then you know the the results i guess that you see now um a, year, a month down the road to be honest, I don't think we did the best job launching it. So I think the the network that we've designed, um, for better or for worse, is you know I've got a bunch of technical geniuses and game designers and, and so forth, kind of you know building um, what I think is an incredibly exciting piece of technology. But it's complicated. It's not like a, even a DeFi project, you know, in terms of how simple you know it is to use. I mean, we we make the experience again. If, if you're coming on board as a fan, 60 seconds, you know, from the time you see something, you want to buy it, you want to earn it, you want to do whatever, you can like get it, right? But in terms of how do you create the governance structure? How do you create the economic design? How do you create the rewards? How do you create like the, enough liquidity in the network so that people can uh, enter and exit out of the creator coins um, and all this stuff, right? So all that stuff created a ton of complexity. And I think we, um, we were, what was cool is like we we try to walk, we try to both talk to the crypto community and the creator community in our own voice. How do we talk about the rally project? 
Um, in some cases, it wasn't crypto enough for like the crypto press to be like, oh, this is cool. I can, I get this. It's community mining or, or something like that. And on the other side, you know, as we talk to creators and so, of course, creators is really, um, you know, it's, it's a very diverse um, set of you know, participants. It's not as if we talk specifically to any one set of creators, except maybe, you know, crypto creators. But I think what, what, what happened, though, is we got our own unique community of people who kind of have one foot, you know, in the crypto world and one foot into, you know, kind of the, the ability for people all over the world to like become their own boss and work for themselves. And so we got a lot of that crowd. And I think that's been awesome for the rally community to have kind of these people who are passionate about this vision of the co economies are becoming more and more digital. I don't want to go work for some huge, you know, multinational corporate thing and climb that ladder. Uh, I want to work for myself. I want to be dependent on myself. I want to bet on myself. Um, and so that that's kind of the community that's coming around for Rally right now, which is exactly what we want as we get this off the ground and develop a community that can self-govern and become the core of kind of, you know, so that as we bring on some big celebrities and big you know communities that are now coming on board, you know, we've got this really strong core that sort of gets the economics, gets the governance, gets that we got to make it easy and simple for creators and their fans. Um, so I think that's kind of the rally community. I invite everyone who's who's uh, watching to come check it out. Um, you know, our Discord is kind of the center of everything. You could you know, find that you know links to that on rally.io. Um, and uh, you know, I'm pretty excited about the community that's coming together for rally. You know, just less than a month in. Yeah, the rally Discord is lit. Uh, definitely check it out. There's quite a lot going on in there, and lots of alpha leaks around like who the next creators are going to be. You know, so, <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> it's a lot of alpha that, leak, yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, so we had we do have some questions, and guys, please leave your questions uh, if you have any um, about rally creator coins, uh, you know, personal tokens, that kind of thing. Um, the question we have from Leandro is. How do you see non-fungible tokens, NFTs, working uh, in this environment? I don't know if you have a thought on that. Absolutely. So, you know, as I started off with, you know, games. Uh, when you play a game, you expect to, you know, we probably don't. You know, gamers may not think about each of the items as an NFT, but uh, items in the game are essentially their own unique digital asset code, and so. Uh, as we talked about with Rally, the whole vision of Rally is to give <clears throat> people, to give creators, to give communities kind of their own little game uh, making kit out of the box, which includes the the, to the virtual currency token itself, so the, what we call a creator coin, um, as well as a very powerful tool for creating and managing NFTs. The NFT part isn't out just yet. We're, we're starting with just the creator coin itself. And as uh, June, we had talked about the ability to use those uh, um, creator coins to do token permission access to a Discord or Telegram, to use it for payment. You know, for um, you know, our gamers are using it for payments to say, "Hey, I'll play a hero that you want." You know, on my next game, you know, in Heroes of the Storm, and I'll play my worst character if you pay me five hundred coins, etc. So things like that is already happening. So we start with the coins, and then the NFTs will. Uh, we're still kind of making sure we, we do the, we finalize the testing of it and so forth and get it all right. But it'll be the ability to uh, create a bunch of different NFTs uh, as a creator and for your users, your fans to collect them and uh, to trade them with each other. Uh, it's all a big part of the, the rally network and, and coming very soon. NFT part you foresee or you, you, you know, you think will probably be much more like, you know, like the way people use NFTs in crypto art, right? Like things that you want to, that people want to collect basically. Yeah. So there'll, there'll be, um, technically the NFT term, as you had mentioned, is kind of a one of a kind, you know, sort of definition. We'll have NFT, we'll have different types of digital assets. You can have uh, no, ra no rarity, you know, attached to an NFT if you want. So, for example, if you're creating a <clears throat> uh, a meetup, you know, online, and you say, "Hey, I'm going to play a virtual concert. I'm going to, you know, for the next, uh, you know, for 20 minutes or, or something like that," and you could buy a ticket, you know, to that, and that's, you know, I'll create an NFT and it costs, you know, whatever to to make this NFT. Uh, you can say, "Hey, there's no limit to this," so you can have five of those. You could have five thousand of them. 
um, and not have any scarcity, you know, to to the limit. You can you can do that as a creator. Or to your point, June, you could say, hey, this is a one of a kind thing. This is a, I've spent, you know, five weeks making this piece of digital art, and uh, only one lucky you know owner is going to have this, and you could you can make it that way too. Um, so yeah, so some pretty cool stuff uh, that we're going to enable for the community. Gotcha. Um, it might be a good time to segue into the architecture of it. So, you know, you know, for, I mean, right now, uh, Infura is down, so gas costs are low, but, um, <laughs> you know, for the, you know, over the whole summer, gas costs were very high. It was very difficult to get things done. Uh, and so Rally actually operates a side chain, right? So I don't know if you want to walk us through the relationship between the side chain and then the, and then the mainnet, um, integration. Yeah, so uh, a side chain is, you know, it's a, um, it's like L2. It's uh, exactly, you know, we're, we're, we will be, we are working with actually L2 technologies to roll up, either roll up the side chain or, or do other things to get the information up on the side chain onto Ethereum mainnet. Um, but right now what, what happens is we have this hybrid structure with a bridge in between. So if you're familiar with other layer one protocols like Near or Algorand or a few others that are kind of bridging in and bridging out of, of, um, of Ethereum, uh, it's a very similar sort of uh, architecture. I think a lot of us that, were, that started a year to two years ago, we were all thinking about the scalability of Ethereum. Um, <clears throat> and for something like this, where we may have a create, you know, uh, like, you know, we have some creators that are coming on and they instantaneously bring, you know, 300 users with them. Um, and hopefully we'll, we'll start getting to thousands and thousands of uh, fans per you know, creator that we're, we're bringing on. Uh, we needed something that was much more scalable than what mainnet Ethereum could, could offer. We didn't even know that gas prices would do what they were doing right now in the kind of DeFi summer and, and so forth. So um, obviously we knew that gas prices would be a problem because if you want to pay, let's say you want to buy uh, $5 worth uh, of your favorite creator's uh, token and use it to pay them. Um, well, gosh, if you had to pay, you know, even 50 cents, you know, for that transaction, that, that'd be a crazy percentage. We'd be worse than the traditional finance world in terms of payment fees, right? So <clears throat> we wanted to get to a point where we can say, hey, you know, on the side chain, we wanted to create an easy way for payments to happen and for it to be totally frictionless in terms of, of gas costs. Um, so that's what the side chain allows us to do is, on the side chain itself, any transactions have zero fee structures. Um, it's a private uh, parity Ethereum node, so it's you know plain vanilla Ethereum. It just hosts. It just kind of creates all the all of the bonding curve stuff and all the other computations just happen on our own node that doesn't have to do consensus with the rest of Ethereum. And um, and what that does is it allows us to 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 make it super simple to integrate a wallet into that as well. So if you're a first time user. You don't have to go figure out how to get, you know, a seed phrase and create your own Web3 wallet yet. You don't have to figure out how to get gas, you know, whether it's through a centralized exchange or something else. It all sort of just kind of works for you out of the box uh, so you can get up and running in 60 seconds. And then if you want to, you know, participate in governance and you want to really explore everything that crypto has, well, you can exit out of the sidechain, go on to mainnet. Um, to a, a trustless ERC-20, and then there you participate in the governance, you participate in um, you know, other things that, are, that the Rally community is building. Um, so we have kind of this, this hybrid architecture that, uh, frankly, like a lot of other DeFi projects are now starting to move to. So if you're familiar with Synthetics or Uniswap with now Unipig, you know, they're now all moving towards layer twos where you need to move into it through some sort of bridge structure. Um, and then you can transact and interact on the layer two, um, but then that layer two is fragmented away from the rest of the mainnet. So then you got to go back to mainnet if you want to, you know, do stuff with other uh, stuff. So it's a very similar architecture uh, to that. It's just something that we build ourselves to again, not so much with just you know scalability and transaction in mind, but just this whole idea of sixty seconds or less to get a user in. How do we do that, and how do we uh, create a uh, experience that makes that simple? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, looking back, it's probably you you guys would probably have made quite a prescient like design choice, right? With the side chain out of the gates, because um, as you say, you know, that's what lots of people are having to do now, sort of mid flight, right? There's like they've got lots of users and they suddenly feel like, oh boy, we got to 
create some way for for folks to do transactions that are not super costly. And I know you you've experimented with XDAI in the early days, right? And so it's uh, hopefully we we think that this this type of our, like by doing it by integrating it all together. Um, I think right now as the Ethereum ecosystem, like you know, use, some people are using XDAI, some people use Matic, some people use Optimism. It kind of creates this interesting fragmentation that I think we're all going to have to deal with um, in the space. And so, like our approach, <laughs> good or bad, was we're going to build it kind of ourselves in our own custom sort of Apple-esque, you know, sort of way. Not that I would I probably shouldn't say exactly that because we we're not we're probably not nearly as great at in design as as Apple is, but the whole point is that we just integrate the whole thing such that the Johnny user I experience is super simple. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure we can afford Johnny Ives, but uh, but yeah, the whole idea is just like let's just make it super simple. Like let's think about it from a pure user experience standpoint and integrate it all so that we can make the user experience exactly what we want it, um, and uh, and then graduate them into more advanced crypto, you know, sort of um, uh, non-custodial, you know, trustlessness over time. But we start people with a really simple experience. Um, um, we have like five minutes left, I'm told. Uh, and guys, if you have questions, please drop them in. Um, I would love to actually pivot the convo a little bit towards the creator side of things, right? So away from the, the mechanics of all of this. Uh, and I'm just curious, like, you know, maybe for the first few creators that the rally company approached and signed on, just curious what what that conversation was like, right? Um, like, what problem did did Creator Coin solve for them, or what were the things that were they were most interested in in, in developing uh, around a Creator Coin? Yeah, so you know, it's a um, <laughs> that that is a uh, that is something that we've discovered very different perspectives on. So, for example, when we talk to you and we talk to other crypto creators. Uh, who played with their own ERC twenty? Some of the challenges were, you know, oh, I, you know, I've got my coin on Uniswap, which is super cool when I put it there. But then managing the liquidity around it and dealing with that and dealing with dispersing this to to users over time, it's all you know, kind of a pain um, in terms of like having to manage all of that stuff, you know, myself um, or having my somebody in my community manage that. Um, for people on Twitch uh, in esport in the esports world, which is a little bit of kind of where we first started, um, where we decided that hey, we'd really focus on that crowd. The the plus was that you know other platform, other social media platforms, you know they could charge a lot of money for processing transactions and, and doing and doing virtual good you know transactions, um, and so the the plus for them was the ability to you know own their own currency to have you know more control over the the payment fees and so forth um but also the drawback was well i've got all this other virtual currency stuff um how do i integrate this into kind of what i do uh and so forth so i think the the plus there is the economics it's also there's another i guess a big plus which is um for a lot of creators who've been on a platform for a while and they've grown themselves um from nothing to something much you know uh, more recognizable now they're thinking well okay but now I've, i'm trying to start my youtube i'm trying to you know explore um some other platforms for my things but everything that i'm doing on this the platform that i grew up with is trying to lock me down and i can't port my data i can't port my fan relationships to these other platforms that i'm trying to use to you know, whether it's a different medium, whether it's like writing or video or audio or something else that they're exploring, they can't, again, they can't port their, uh, their community over. And <clears throat> um, in, in a more centralized sort of big tech world, that's always going to be the case. So I think that's why Rally, we're so focused on from the beginning, even though we don't, we probably, you know, it probably causes more friction than it, it, it helps. Is like every creator, every decision is coming through the community itself because we want to be able to go to a creator and say, look, here's our entire roster of creators since October 15th. Every single one of them, you know, the community weighs in on. And it's the community that's going to decide, you know, that you're going to participate in, um, that's going to decide the fate of this platform. It's not going to be a big tech company that's looking out for our own interests or, you know, we're going IPO, so we're going to start raising the fees on everyone or, or something else. You know, no, this is this is an open sourced, you know, open network. 
that is community run for creators, by creators, uh, and, and for their fans. And uh, it's totally controlled by the community, not by a company uh, that has its own interest at, uh, at heart. Yeah, no, I think that point you made about <clears throat> portability is, is a really key one, right? Especially as you see, like, for example, like um, a proliferation of like, you know, uh, uh, video uh, social platforms, right? So, you know, lots of people I followed on Instagram, then moved over to TikTok and, you know, slightly different audiences, they, they slightly augment things. Um, and usually when I go over to TikTok, I'm just like, I had no idea they had so many fans on TikTok. Right. And so like for them, it must be a very difficult way for difficult for them to bridge, I guess, those different audiences. Um, and I think um, owning a community currency or fan currency is, is a great way that they that they control. Right. It's a great way um, to do mm -hmm. that. Um, although mm -hmm. I'm, I'm wondering just like from a usability, you know, I went I'm not a big Twitch user, so I'm kind of a Twitch noob. I, I went and checked out some of the creators who have creator coins on Twitch and um, you know, I was struck by by how prominent the Twitch virtual currency is, right? So it's you know the own button and everything, and so like I guess for for all of these platforms that these creators are on, isn't it? How do you break through that that UI layer, right? How do you get people to say, well, you know, you can use these creator coins instead of the native, you know, whatever token it is that's on that on that platform? Yeah, but I think there's always going to be you know. These platforms that have obviously built humongous audiences, they have a lot of, you know, they have a, there's a lot of uh, benefit and value that they bring to their community. So I'm not saying that big, you know, big tech isn't, you know, doing a good job at, at, at a lot of things, you know, frankly. I'm just saying, you know, very specifically for, it's, we're not going to appeal to all creators, but for the creators that, you know, start to think about, hey, I've, I want to have multiple platforms that I'm reaching my audience in. And I want more control, or I want 100% control over my economics and my own destiny of my own money. Um, like that is something that you can only do, I think, with with crypto and um, and with a truly community-run project like Rally. So we're never going to be as prominently, you know, sort of integrated into these platforms, obviously, as whatever the platforms are are doing themselves. Um, but I think there's going to be over time, there's going to be room for you know, multiple things, especially if the if something like Rally is offering, you know, you know, like your so number one, you have it is branded to your own, you know, brand or current your your own um, your personal brand or your your business brand or whatever it is. So, you know, it's not you're not transacting in a Twitch coin or a, a, a Rally coin or, or something else. You're transacting in a June coin or a Kevin Chu coin or a you know, you're able to create in and own your own destiny where when you first create your token, you're 100% owner of that thing, you control it completely, right? So we don't take any of it as a platform, it's completely yours um, when you first create your own your own token. Uh, second is that, you know, whenever <clears throat> you transact in it, you own 100% of the transactions. You know, you don't have to ever worry that this company, Rally, is going to increase the fees on you, that uh, the rules of, the, uh, of how you can use it can change on you, et cetera. Um, you know, those are the things that um, you can uh, you know you can um, you can you can say I'm going to invest in this thing for the long term. Yes, I may not be ready to have 100% of my transactions flow through this, but what if I just take you know a, a one or two things that I do with my fan community and move it you know into this you know type of a structure um, so that I can diversify my <clears throat> my economic um, sort of earnings. I think that's that's something that a lot of our creators are starting to think about and do and say, well, great, you know, Twitch is fantastic. I've got you know my, my core earnings through my subscriptions and some other things that I do there, but I'm gonna use Rally for this thing that I'm gonna kick off and do. Um, and that's, I think, a very smart thing. And, and you know, crypto, your own cryptocurrency also has another unique property, which I don't know if there's a good name that I'm, that I'm sure there's a good name, but I'm just, uh, <clears throat> maybe you can help me in your, your research with it. It's the, the fact that when you first create it, it's worth nothing, right? So it's not, if I want to reward my fans and my community, it's not like I have to go to my bank account and take out five US dollars and give it to you, right? I can create my own, when I create my, my, my first, you know, Kevin Chu coin, for example, it's worth nothing. So I can give it to you. And just as a thank you, right? Thank you for being with me. Thank you for being a loyal fan. 
And then, so all the people that were are with me at the Genesis, you know, basically, we all share in this thing that doesn't really have any value just yet. But if we all use it together and we all imbue this currency, this, this token with uh, real value because we start valuing that it represents membership in this community, that it represents access, that it represents, you know, way to pay for things in our own, <clears throat> in our own uh, currency that we all care about, you know, then I think, you know, that thing potentially, you know, just it, ha it takes on a life of its own in terms of its own value. And the people who help create that value share in that value. So I think that's the most interesting thing about being able to create your own currency from scratch and use it with the community that you care about. Um, so I think for all those things are going to be unique qualities of this that you can't replicate as a big tech you know, platform. You can, you can make a lot of things easy and a lot of things integrated uh, as a as a traditional technology company, uh, but the crypto um, uh, technology and ethos that we embrace at Rally, I hope, well, for certain types of creators, you know, represent some very unique use cases that you can start to use in addition to, <clears throat> you know, some of these other centralized uh, sort of payment structures. I mean, one one thing that struck me when I was chatting to some of these creators with Creator Coins was. I guess it seemed as though to them they didn't really differentiate between the different types of payment options, right? Because I was kind of asking like, oh, you know, what's the difference if I, you know, bought creator coin, your creator coin, or use uh, uh, Twitch tokens, et cetera. And they're like, oh, well, you know, it's all kind of the same thing. But, you know, if you use our creator coin, it's a little bit cheaper right now um, in dollar terms for some of the merchandise that they were selling, right? So I think like the other ingredient in this whole thing is like time, right? Like creators need time to like experiment and just get their heads around all of these different concepts, I, I guess. Um, and then- And that's yeah. really where I think, just to quickly interrupt, this is why the community use, uh, community activity rewards are so important because it's a little bit like Bitcoin. So Bitcoin has all these properties that, you know, we're, we're talking about right now, right? And, but what made Bitcoin, Bitcoin pioneered this thing that I think is, again, so unique, which is if I cared about Bitcoin, 11 years ago at this point, um, almost 11 years ago. Uh, and you know, I participated, I set up my own node, I mined it, uh, I just earned it. You know, I earned a bunch of Bitcoin for helping to contribute to the network. Um, and that's what got a bunch of people to like earn this stuff when it was literally, I mean, it's worth like fractions of a penny. And, uh, and, and now that it's worth whatever it's worth today, probably 15, 16,000, it's, uh, you know, that, like that entire growth cycle is um, the ability to earn it when it was worth, when, when it was still super new was a really key part, right? So it, yeah, I had all the things that we're talking about, instant settlement, you know, low fees, blah, 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 uh, you know, trustlessness, but really over like the thing that helped it, I think in the beginning was like, hey, here's a way you can earn a bunch of it. So I think, you know, in a, in a lot of what DeFi, you know, what made DeFi uh, in the early days was also, hey, here's a way that you can earn this token, this, whether it was a governance token or something else, through liquidity mining, through you know other reward systems, right? And I think that's such an important thing. It has to be managed correctly, right? Because obviously you can destroy your economy through too much inflation and make something totally worthless and, and all that kind of stuff. But if done correctly, it gives people who are um, learning about it, using it, the ability to earn it um, when the, the thing is still early. I think that's such a key component. And so again, to your point, like starting tomorrow, creators would be like, oh, cool. Like, yeah, I get the the low fee thing. I get that I, I get to make it myself and so forth. But the cool thing is now if I start using, you know, my own creator coin instead of, you know, this other, you know, mechanism, not only is it low fees and instant and blah, 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 but we all earn a little bit of rally, you know, we earn some rally together, right? And of course, in the early days of the, of the, the rally project, just like every other crypto project, you know, like the earnings are going to be potentially pretty significant for every creator, you know, on the platform. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I, yeah, I do think the sort of the engagement farming mechanism is going to be really cool to watch as it plays out. Um, and uh, if you'll indulge me for a minute, so, you know, what you talked about in terms of um, creating your own currency, right? So that's a concept that's been around for, for some time. Uh, I, I explored it a bit in my last column, uh, Pace Notes column for Rally. And, and it's this idea of local or complementary 
currencies, right? Um, and one of the most famous ones was in the in the eighties in Ithaca in upstate New York. There was a big movement to create Ithaca hours, right? Which was like time based mm, yeah. uh, uh, local currency. And I've never versus, heard about that. That was super cool. Yeah, it was a very big movement at one point and spread all across North America. Uh, it's called Let's, the Let's movement, it's called. Um, and um, the way it works is exactly as you described. So everybody in that community agrees, well, we're going to accept Ithaca hours. And we all start with zero. And you go from zero to, and you debit from there. So if I gave you some of my hours, I would be, you know, minus 10 hours or something. Um, and, 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 and so, so it would go, right? So the other guy would get plus 10 hours uh, and you start circulating the hours. But the interesting thing about all these local currency things is that it all sums up to zero. So there's no surplus. So there, there was no ability to like capture any surplus value and then trade it in another market, right? Which I think with crypto social tokens, you actually do have that ability which may be good or bad because it means you know you, you're open to market fluctuations and speculation as well um so i think that's the really fascinating thing about what we're all doing in social tokens here yeah you know i think the uh, i distilled out like looking at all the different history of money you know money is just such a funny thing because you know money is ultimately the common belief of a group of people that it has value uh, and that it represents something else, um, whether I eventually need to get some food with it or get clothing with it or storing it, you know, for, for use in the, the future or, or whatever. So, um, so yeah, I think we're, we're all experimenting with it. And I think that's what's so cool about crypto is that, you know, we get, we, and that's why we, we really wanted to make it a super simple experience to get into it because that's, what's going to enable more and more experimentation. So, I hope that route, like a lot of you know people watching here, would be like, "Hey, let me try creating a, a token," and that uh, hopefully it's a pretty simple experience, and then it just allows, "Hey, I'm going to use it for this. I'm going to try it with this with this community of people that <clears throat> I'm involved in." And I think uh, lowering that barrier so that that level of experimentation is easier and easier and easier will allow uh, us to kind of all see all across the world how does you know, what happens when you have a, a really easy way that uses software and cryptographic proofs as a way to create trust, to just experiment with new forms of money and new forms of uh, kind of community, uh, you know, tokens uh, and exchange of value. So I'm super excited about what this all, what this all is going to, to look like. Um, and we've seen it to your point, like throughout history, whether it was the, yeah, I never heard of the, um, the project starting in Ithaca, but you know, there's, you know, post World War I, World War II in Germany and plenty of other, you know, island nations all across the world. So many different communities experimented with so many different forms of money. And, uh, uh, you know, post World War II, the world order has been a little bit more established. So there hasn't been as much uh, experimentation. And I feel like Bitcoin and then now what's happening with uh, social tokens is just going to allow so many new experiments to, uh, to kind of flourish. Um, and I, I couldn't be more excited about that. Absolutely. Uh, we better get our browser tabs open because there's going to be a lot of snapshot pages that we need to vote on. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, I think that's a good place to leave it. Um, in fact, I think we, we went over our allotted time. Um, so let's leave it there. Um, thank you, Kevin. Uh, always a pleasure um, to, to chat with you. And um, thank all of you for listening and, and for your questions. See you Thanks, guys. everyone.